Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, April 21st, and it's time for our daily devotion. Um, I'm going to read a scripture passage today out of Jesus' own words that are, are hard to hear, um, but one that I think we need to be reminded of from time to time. It's Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to Jesus. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were uh, fastened to him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So why is that a hard scripture to hear? Well, it doesn't really include me. That's why. When you hear Jesus say he came... Uh, for certain people, and you're not a part of that certain people, it's always a little bit of a disconcerting uh, proclamation. I'm not poor. Uh, very few people in America are. Uh, we, you know, there are, uh, there are people in America who are poor, those who uh, go hungry, those who ha don't have a place that they, uh, to live, um, People who really have to figure out, can they survive to the next day financially? Now, these are the poor. And overall, you know, the majority, the overwhelming majority of Americans are not in that situation. I am not a prisoner. Uh, now, again, when, when the Bible talks about prisoners, they usually are more talking about political prisoners and people who were unjustly put in prison uh, as opposed to criminals. But even so, um, I'm not a prisoner in any way, shape, or form. So I don't really have to be set free that way. And then people who are dealing with things like oppression and physical limitations. I've never been oppressed in my life. I really don't have any physical limitations that I haven't brought upon myself by eating too much pizza. So all of this said, I am not really being spoken to in this passage. And so we can wind up doing one of two things. The first is say, well, we better take this um, metaphorically. Let's say, well, spiritually, I am poor. Spiritually, I am a prisoner held in captivity by my sin. Spiritually, I am blind, and spiritually, I am oppressed. And to be honest, that I'd fit in. Uh, I, I would argue uh, that all of us fit into that, and so it's very tempting. Uh, it's very tempting to say, well, obviously this is what Jesus, Jesus meant. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not true. Um, I mean, I think there's meaning in that. I think it's worth doing from time to time. But if we're really going to look at Jesus' words, we have to say, no, that is not the way to read this text. The way to read this text is that Jesus really did come to preach the good news to the poor. He really did come to set the prisoners free. He really did come to bring sight to the blind, and he really did come to bring freedom to the oppressed. And that means those of us who are not in those situations, and I'm going to be honest, for the people who are watching this, you're probably more with me than the people who Jesus is talking about. That means we have to be Jesus to the people who he's talking about, because Jesus has gone to heaven, and Jesus has given us the challenge and the calling to continue Jesus' work on earth with Jesus' help. And that means we are the ones who are supposed to be there for the poor. We are supposed to be the ones 
who are there uh, for the prisoners. We are the ones who are supposed to be there for the blind and the oppressed. And we are the ones who are supposed to be trying to bring them good news. Yesterday was a big day. Uh, yesterday was a day that just about everybody was anxiously awaiting. We had an event last year where an African-American male was killed because a police officer put his knee on a man's throat for nine minutes. And it spurred the Black Lives Matters movement, although police officers have been killing unarmed African-Americans for decades. And it only has been getting brought into attention because all of a sudden now they're all getting videoed. And we were gonna see if the man who did the crime was going to be convicted. And he was. And there's a lot of relief, a lot of joy. And I'm sure there are people out there that are pretty annoyed that how dare a police officer be uh, uh, convicted of a crime against a criminal. I'm sorry if you believe that way, because this isn't going to go your way. We have been called not to be the good news to the powerful, to the rich, to the ones with plenty, to the ones with authority. We have been called to be the good news to the very people that had their throats crushed by a police officer. We have been given the call to stand up for those who need the rich to stand up for them, to need the, the, not, the, the oppressors to stand up for them. We need to be the ones that are there for the little guy. And right now, that calling is just as important as in, than in Jesus' time. There are people in our own country, in our own communities, that need to hear the good news because they don't hear it any other way. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't support police officers. I support police officers a, as much as I support ministers. Uh, a few, well, not a few years ago, but a decade ago now, 20 years ago now, when all of the conversations came out about, or the revelations came out about ministers who are abusing children. I still supported ministers and I wanted every one of those criminals to be held accountable. I support police officers. I will bend over backwards for a police officer. But when they turn and when they become murderers and racists, I want them to be held accountable as well. And that's what Jesus is asking for us to do. To be there for the ones who are uh, who no one is asking for their oppressor to be held accountable. And that's what we got to do. And it's not easy and it's hard and it takes us out of our comfort zone. Do you hear me say that a lot, don't you? Because Jesus doesn't want us to be in comfort zones. That's who we're called to be. And according to Jesus' own words, that's who we are called to be Jesus for. We had a conviction yesterday that finally showed someone was going to be held accountable. Let's let this be a springboard. Let this be uh, not the ending and saying, oh, well, now everything's fine. But to say, no, things aren't fine because we just had another police officer kill another unarmed African-American right in the city next door to where this all happened. And this isn't the first one in the last month. It keeps happening. We had an army, a, a person in the military uniform get assaulted by a police officer for no other reason than he was black. It happens. It's happening all the time. And we need to stand up and say, no, we are not okay with that because Jesus the Christ is not okay with that. Let us be the good news.
to the people who Christ asked us to be the good news for. Let's pray. Lord, it is hard to be Christ on this earth, to be the person, the people who you want us to be. God, please, Lord, please give us the strength we need to be the good news to the poor, to be the good news to the prisoner, to be the good news to the blind and the good news to the oppressed. Help us to leave our comfort zones to do your work. Amen.